Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be installing a white picket fence across the front of our yard as well as down the side of our property right here. So stick around and see what I've got planned. Now the fence we're building will be about 120 feet. We're going to need 13 4x4s, 24 2x4s, 52 1x6x8s. By by Those are fence boards, 13 50 pound bags of concrete, and one large box of outdoor screws, equaling about $590 after tax. Now, if you were to have this fence installed, it can cost anywhere from $13 to $50 per foot. Now, to show you the type of savings you can get from installing a fence yourself, I took the very bottom of the line, $13 per foot times 120 feet. That equals $1,560 to have this fence installed. Now, that's the very bottom of the line, cheap as you can get, and it's still a savings of at least $970 if you do this yourself. Now, before we started this fence, we had a land surveyor come out and put in the stakes along our property line just to make sure we had the right line as there were no stakes or property markers before this. So now I'm gonna run a string all the way down the property line so that I know where to dig the holes for the post. Now, the first post you wanna start with is either an end post or a corner post if you have one. This will really guide the whole line of fencing that you're putting in, so you want to take the time to make sure that this is in the right spot, it's not going to throw anything off, and you have a nice straight guide to follow all the way down the line. Now the posts that I'm using are 6 foot 4x4s. I'll be digging exactly 2 foot down into the ground. That will leave 4 foot above the ground for my fencing to be mounted to. Now each of the posts I'm also going to be filling the hole with cement. I'll put one 50 pound bag of cement in each hole so it won't completely fill the hole but it will give it a lot of strength down underneath the surface. Now once you have the cement ready, you can pour that right in the bottom of the hole and after the cement is in, then you can move the post around a little bit and make sure it's in the right place as well as making sure it's level. Now I'll check it again with the string, make sure that it's in line where it needs to be. And you can use your foot or a prying bar and move the bottom of the post over, even though the cement's in there, it's still soft enough to move the post around. So there's no worries there. So once I get that in the right place, I'll check for level and then I can start filling in the dirt. You don't have to worry about the cement drying. It will dry underground. You don't have to worry about that at all. So I'm gonna start filling in the dirt and then I can make some final adjustments on making sure it's level once I have that filled in. Now, once the dirt has been filled in, it's thrown off the level a little bit on the post, but you can easily correct this by stomping on the dirt on either side of the post, wherever it needs to, and it pushes the post over a little bit. You could even use a rod or pole and use that to hammer the dirt down in order to push the post. Now the fence post looks great, it's level now, I'll move on to the next hole. Now I'm gonna measure this out. You wanna make sure that these are exactly eight foot apart or a little bit less. If it's any more than that, you might need to buy a 10 foot two by four and cut off two feet just about. And that's just a waste of money, don't do that. So if you can just try to go a little bit less than eight foot, that way you can always trim the two by fours to fit in place instead of having to go buy a longer two by four. One of my friends volunteered to come over and help out with the fence, digging the holes for the post, and this will be a huge help. We'll be rotating on and off. I'll be digging with the postal digger as he busts everything up inside, all the clay and roots that we're going through while I'll clean up the hole. And we'll rotate on and off, which will save me a ton of work. 
Digging the holes and setting the posts is by far the most important step in my opinion. If you don't do this right, it's gonna throw off the whole project. So it's worth taking the time to make sure each post is in line where it needs to be and it's level before you move on to the next one. That way when you're done, you can look down the fence line and have a perfectly straight fence line. None of them are leaning, it will look really nice and you have done a good job. Now that's just about far enough for the picket fence down this side. We're gonna stop it right at the front corner of the house. From there back, it's gonna be a taller privacy fence. That'll be another project, another video, another day. But we're gonna also run the picket fence across the front of the yard, closing it in. Now that's pretty much been a full day of just digging, setting the posts and putting cement inside, making sure everything's level and ready to go before it dries. Now day two, we're gonna be cutting off all the posts level all the way across. We're gonna be putting the two by four runners down the whole line, the top and bottom. And then we're also gonna be cutting and starting to attach the picket fence onto the runners. Now there's a trick to cutting off these 4x4s perfectly square at the top and having a nice edge. I take a large speed square, I clamp that to the 4x4, and that gives me a square track to run across with my circular saw and cut it perfectly square. Now I know from my saw measuring it out, the blade is five and a quarter inches from the edge of the base that the saw has. So I can set this speed square five and a quarter inches from the line and I'll cut right across the line every single time. So that's gonna be different for each saw, but once you know that measurement, you can easily replicate this same setup on each post and make sure you cut it off exactly at the right spot, square every time. Now to get all of these cut off at the same height across the front yard, it's pretty much level. So I'm just gonna run a string across, make sure it's really tight so that it doesn't sag at all. And then I can use that string as the line to cut the four by fours off at. Now that I have all the 4x4s cut off level all the way across, I can start attaching the 2x4 runners. To do this, they sell these 2x4 brackets to screw them on the inside of the 4x4s, but those aren't that strong. These floor joists are a lot stronger. They have much more surface area. There's two screws to go in the 2x4s, four screws to go in the 4x4s, and it holds really well. The smaller brackets for fencing is only about a half an inch deep, and if the 2x4s bow or warp at all, they could actually pull out. So this is a much better option, and they're not any more expensive. So I got a whole box of these for about $30, it came with 54 and it definitely be enough to finish my fencing. Now these brackets are really easy to use as well. You put four screws on either bracket in the center of the four x four. Once that's done, you just cut the two x four if you need to cut it to the right length. And then you just tap or hammer that down into place. Now, once that's in place, all you have to do is put two screws on either end of the two x four and then it's done. It's not going anywhere. Now I've got the top board across the front near the road done, and you can see it looks really nice. It is solid. You can climb on this, put all your weight on it, and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now I'm also gonna be running a two by four runner along the bottom of the fence for all the pickets to screw to. Now to do this, you wanna make sure all the brackets are at the right level all the way across so that it doesn't look odd when you're done. If you look down the fence, you'll see the two by fours going up and down. It will all be level, be perfectly aligned, and I'll follow that string all the way across the fence and that will be my guide to attach those brackets on the four by four.
Now this goes pretty quick, like I mentioned before, just four screws, two on either side on these brackets, and I can just go down the whole line, putting these on and come back for the two by fours later. Now my wife came out today to help set this fence up. She's gonna be cutting the runners and putting those in place while I'm going down the line attaching all the brackets. So thanks babe for helping out and being awesome. Now this side's gonna be a little more difficult. The yard is sloping down, but there's also a big dip in it that you can't do this if you're gonna buy the solid panels. It's gonna be a lot harder to do and it just won't look right. So we're actually using the individual pickets for all the way across the front as well as the side. This will allow us to follow the ground grading downwards a lot easier and have a nice slope to the fence. Now, because the fence posts are gradually going downhill, the two by fours aren't gonna be level either. They're gonna be sloping down. So these will need to be cut at an angle in order to fit in the space perfectly. Now the runners are done, we're gonna move on to preparing the pickets. And to do this, we're actually making our own because all the stores around in our area only had one style of pickets and we didn't really like those that much. Plus they were double the price of what we could actually make our own pickets. So we're gonna save $150 with just a, about an hour and a half worth of work and make our own. So I'm gonna start out by taking the eight foot one by six fence boards, ripping them down the middle. Then my wife's gonna take those two pieces, cut them exactly in half on our chop saw station. That will give us four pickets per eight foot board. That will give us 208 pickets that we need for our fence. Now once we've cut down all 208, there's one more step we're gonna take. We'll cut a 45 degree angle on each of these pickets on the top to give it a nice point. Now each of these boards had a top and a bottom. The top had a dog ear, like two 45 degree angles notched out of the top. So when we're cutting off the 45 degree angle, I'm making sure that all the dog ears are on the same side and we'll cut those off and make a new point on each of these boards. Now to make this go even faster, I'm stacking up these boards in sets of four so my wife can cut all four at once with the chop saw and we can move through this stack pretty quickly. Now we set this assembly line up outside, not in my shop, because this will create a ton of dust. This doesn't need to be in the shop or in the house. So we set it up underneath our carport so we could at least stay out of the sun and stay cool. Now the stack's just about finished. That will give us 208 pickets, which will be a little over what we need, but we'll have some extra if we need it. Now it's time to start attaching the pickets. And to do this, you're gonna wanna find the center point in between each of these posts. That will give you the first picket that you can mount in the center. Now, as you're mounting these, you'll wanna keep 
these up off the ground probably two or three inches that way they stay dry they're not soaking up all the moisture from the ground and they don't rot out nearly as fast now once we have the first picket mounted i'm going to create a guide for all the rest this is going to keep them all at the same height as well as the same distance apart so i used two two by four blocks on the back one to go behind the two by four and one to go right above it as a spacer and then there's just a fence picket on the front this is what's going to be creating the gap in between each picket that way they stay uniform all across the board and it'll be a lot quicker to easily set this guide in and then screw in the next picket and i'll show you guys how to do that in just a second my wife's gonna help out by moving the guide down each time I mount a new picket. This will kind of leapfrog the guide all the way down to the end. And then from there, we're gonna start from the middle working our way to the other side. That way, everything stays level, everything is the same distance apart, and it will be uniform all across the board. Now I shortened the spacer because it kept getting stuck down towards the bottom. It doesn't need to be the full length, just enough on the top to make sure everything's staying square and level with the picket before it. Now the first section is done. The step is a lot quicker and it's really fun to see the fence coming together and seeing what it's gonna look like in the end. So we're just gonna speed this up, go down the line, and as you can see, all the pickets are gonna be the same level. They're gonna be following the height of the runner all the way across, and that's why those runners are important to make sure everything's level and they're all in a straight line. That way, when you're doing the pickets, it makes it a lot easier to line everything up. Now the sun's starting to go down, so we're gonna call it a day pretty soon, and I'll come out in the morning and finish the fence up. All right guys, this is the last section on the fence. I hope you found this helpful. I really just wanted to share how much money you can save. We saved nearly $1,000 by building this fence ourselves. And I really wanted to show you guys how to build it yourself too so that you can save money. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button down below. Also share with anybody that you know that would like this video or benefit from learning how to build this fence themselves and saving a lot of money. Now with my videos, I wanna keep improving and making them the best that they can be and be helpful for you guys to teach you the best that I can how to create different projects. And to do this, I need some feedback from you. So let me know down in the comment section down below if you thought I explained too much and gave too much information, if I had just enough and it was sufficient, or if I should include more information and explain more steps through the process. I love to hear from you guys, so I look forward to your comments and I will address any questions you guys have down in the comment section down below. Here's a couple quick before and after pictures. I also ran across this picture a little while ago of our house when we first moved in. It's come a long ways. I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing progress videos along the way. Now here's the finished fence. We are gonna finish this off and paint it later on, but you need to let pressure treated wood like this cure for up to six months, let it fully dry out, and that way the paint will actually stick to it like it should and not peel off. Now, if you look down this line, I'm really excited about this. It's a perfectly straight line. We did a good job setting the posts and this is a really nice finished fence. And you can see the grade of the yard slowly going down, but it looks really nice altogether. 
Now, one last thing before this video is done, don't forget to go to my Patreon page if you're interested in helping support the channel. If you have found my projects helpful and have saved you some money, consider supporting the channel so that I can keep creating projects like this and helping other people save money and build things and create things themselves. So if you're interested in that, go check out the link down in the description of this video. I will also be giving away a lot of cool perks as well as merchandise to my patrons for signing up on Patreon. After three months of supporting the channel, you'll get a free t-shirt, a free mug, and a free bumper sticker depending on which tier you have signed up on on Patreon. So go check that out. A lot of really cool things offered for you guys if you want to support the channel. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one.